Hello and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Newsbaum. I'm about to interview our very special friend of ATP, but before I do, I want to remind listeners and viewers out there in ATP land, if you haven't already subscribed to our absolutely free text message alert system, please do that now. Take out your cell phone and text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, and send it to the number 88202. When you push send on your text message, you'll be automatically subscribed to get all of our content, including everything from our special guest today, absolutely for free on your cell phone in the palm of your hand. Okay, we got that busy work out of the way. I want to bring on Robert Spencer. Robert Spencer is the publisher and creator of Jihad Watch. He has written uh, several dozen books. He is the world's expert on jihad and Islamization of the world. I'm so happy to have him back. Welcome, Robert. Good to talk to you as always, Barry. Thank you. So we've got a lot of uh, Islamic news from around the world. Let's start with New Zealand. Um, I guess this jihadi that had been followed by the police and they had him under heavy surveillance in their words, walked into a store, took out a knife from the store and stabbed half a dozen people. And then they took him out. How is it possible that they know the guy is out there, they're watching him constantly and they can't prevent a mass murder attack like this? This is a textbook case of how not to deal with the jihadi. New Zealand had this man in prison and they released him early despite the fact that he had made it clear that he intended to wage jihad and attack New Zealanders again. And then they put him under surveillance, as you noted, heavy surveillance. That meant in practice 60, six zero, uh, uh, three score cops were following him at all times. And when he went into the supermarket, instead of thinking we better follow him into the supermarket, they thought, oh, he's just going to do a little shopping. And so he took a knife and stabbed six people, as you noted. And then in response, despite the fact that he was screaming Allahu Akbar as he was stabbing these people, he was uh, the, the first thing that the prime minister of New Zealand, Jacinda Ardern said was, we have to be sure to be careful about uh, thinking that this has anything to do with Islam. And uh, this was just an individual's act. That's all it is. And then the supermarket chain that he went into, they banned knives. So if you want to buy it, <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. you can't go to the supermarket now and get a knife in New Zealand to cut your, your meat. You can't do it because this guy stabbed people. And obviously that means the problem is knives. Nobody will dare say the problem is jihad. Nobody will dare say the problem is Islam's doctrines of warfare against unbelievers. So they're constantly looking for other scapegoats, in this case, focusing on the weapon. Just to be clear, Robert, has there ever been a case of a knife committing murder by itself? Because I, I don't ever remember a story like that. Do you? This is the ridiculous leadership we have in the Anglosphere today, in the English speaking countries. It's the same thing, really. In, uh, in Britain, there have been restrictions and calls for further restrictions on knives after jihadis have gone on stabbing attacks there. And it's the same kind of thing as we see in the United States, that when somebody start, uh, shoots up a place, the problem is gun control. When the reality is that the knife attacks themselves show, people are gonna use whatever weapon is at hand. And if you outlaw knives, they'll find something. Else. Yeah, I, I understand um, in some places in Britain now, scissors are illegal because a scissor might commit a crime. But as you said, it's just insanity and it's deflection. So in Afghanistan, the debacle of all time, maybe in the last hundred years of American foreign policy is in full evidence for everyone to watch the disaster created by the abrupt American abandonment of not only the Afghan people, but billions in equipment. Um, there seems to be a complete refusal uh, by the United States to have recognized what was really gonna happen. Talk about that, would you? The United States all summer was worried about woke uh, theory, was worried about the uh, possibility that there might be so-called white supremacists in the military, which essentially meant 
supporters of Trump. And the military was instituting critical race theory in the military, in, in among the troops. General Milley, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff said, I want to understand white rage. What he apparently did not want to understand was the Taliban's popularity among Afghans and the speed with which the Afghans were going to embrace the Taliban and throw off the national government after the Americans were withdrawing. Uh, I was asked, as a matter of fact, on a show not long before the whole thing started, how long do you think the Afghan national government is going to last once the Americans are gone? And I said, about five minutes. And uh, that may have been an optimistic assessment given the uh, fact, the rapidity of the collapse. But the American military was completely wrong-footed. They were completely caught off guard by this because they probably believe their own propaganda about the uh, popularity of the uh, Afghan national government, the popularity of American presence in Afghanistan, the unpopularity of the Taliban, uh, the uh, lack of acceptance of the people for Sharia. They, they put out all this nonsense, and then apparently they believed their own propaganda to their own detriment. The um, Afghan people actually love the Taliban and love Sharia, and that's why they love the Taliban. And so it was a far gone conclusion that the Afghan national government would collapse quickly. The American military was caught off guard because they weren't paying attention. They were too busy enforcing leftism on the American military. I'm stunned by the absence of any actionable intelligence that the military could have followed, or maybe, as you said, we just disregarded it and followed the admonishments of General Milley, who's worried about white supremacy in the military and doesn't seem to care much about winning and defending and protecting Americans. Speaking of which, uh, we're almost bumping into the anniversary of 9-11, 20 years ago, the worst terror attack in American history. And oh my gosh, how the narrative has changed, Robert. I, I did a commentary a few days ago how the media slant in regards to 9-11 is no longer about the victims, very little about the perpetrators, um, how they literally followed the dictates of their jihadi philosophy and how they put it all together. And now, and I'm stupefied to have to answer, answer, ask you this question, Robert. Now we're looking at feeling bad for Islamophobia caused by the worst Islamic attack in American history. How did the narrative get flip-flopped like this? Well, this has been a skillful effort by American advo Islamic advocacy groups, and they've been remarkably successful. And so over the last few days, I've seen the Los Angeles Times, the Associated Press, and CNN, and I'm sure there were others, all focusing on how Muslims have been victimized in the United States since 9-11. And the clear uh, lesson is that Muslims were the real victims of the 9-11 attacks. Now, how did, this, how did Muslims get to be the real victims of the 9-11 attacks? That comes from the idea that jihad terrorism is uh, something that has nothing to do with Islam. And so the attacks had nothing to do with Islam. But after the attacks, there were all these counter-terror efforts among Muslims. And so that was ipso facto uh, discriminatory even racist, although of course Islam is not a race and there are Muslims of all races and Islamic jihadis of all races. In any case, the uh, idea is that uh, Muslims have been teased, called names, suspected of being terrorists and so on since 9-11 and that's the real story. That's what the establishment media is focusing upon. It's unfortunate if any of these incidents that are recounted in these stories really happened. It's a real shame. But 3,000 people were killed on 9-11. That's more of a shame than people being called names and so on. I'm not saying that I'm in favor of anybody being rude or anything of the kind, but to act as if the real victims are uh, Muslims who were inconvenienced by counter-terror efforts or who have been uh, called names by louts since 9-11, that's, that's uh, a complete deflection of attention away from where it ought to be, which is that the global jihad continues and it is still a threat. And there have been no stories about that that I've seen in the establishment media at all. Robert, extremely well said. Uh, shifting gears, communist China, um, which is hell-bent on running the world or so it seems, 
uh, has taken extreme advantage of Joe Biden's weakness, not only uh, with them, but in the White House in general. What are your thoughts on that? You know, right after Afghanistan fell to the Taliban, the Global Times, which is a Chinese Communist Party organ, published an article about uh, actually warning Taiwan and addressing the ruling party in Taiwan and saying, you should be reading the lessons of Afghanistan. You would fold up in hours if the Chinese, uh, rep the Demo I'm sorry, if the People's Republic attacks Taiwan, you'll fold up in hours and the United States will not help you. And so they see this as a sign of American weakness, which it is, and they, uh, I, I believe, are going to take full advantage of it. And that we're going to see Chinese military action against Taiwan in the near future. It wouldn't have happened under Trump. That's all I got to tell you in response on that. Yeah. Um, Robert, tell people how they can uh, follow you and learn more about what you do. Yeah, I'm at jihadwatch.org online, which is a news and commentary site about jihad activity. You can subscribe there, get a daily digest in your email. And I'm at Jihad Watch RS on Twitter. And my books are at Amazon. If you search for Robert Spencer, you'll find them and uh, collect them, trade them, get the whole set. And I can't recommend you do it any stronger than please go read his books. If you're not educated, you don't know who the enemy is and why they may be coming for you next. And just a quick reminder, please subscribe if you haven't. Send the word truth in the message box to 88202. Push send. You'll be signed up. You'll get all of Robert Spencer when he's on ATP and all of our other reports absolutely free. Thanks for joining us today. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.